Good morning, YouTube. Yes, we're still at the campground. Remember the last video I said that we were closing out the video for Jellystone because there's really nothing else we could show. But what can we show you today? What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Well, we're going to show you a couple of things that uh, I need to do to get the RV straightened out and Heidi straightened out <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've got these uh, tank level sensors these things here and this tells you how much propane you have in your tanks just a touch a button it takes it a while it's waking up the sensor out there so it doesn't use the battery and no it don't beep that was my phone or Heidi's phone uh, this is the uh, other sensor you can see we're using a little bit of propane of course that is um, an app on the phone too that tells us what our propane levels are uh, but to get that signal into the RV they give you these little aluminum feet that go on the bottom of the uh, propane tank and they have a tendency to fall off and the tank is unbalanced and it's the worst part about the design by far I know they did it for cost reasons but it's just horrible so if you decide to buy the tank sensors which the links will be in the description below um, which I highly suggest because I, I got two of them for the two tanks I set them up wasn't hard to do one of them failed I called the company and this is after the first refill one of them failed I called the company they didn't give me any crap anything like that they basically asked me a few questions I think they wanted me to give them a number off of the the, the failed one, and uh, this is after I troubleshoot, you know, did all this troubleshooting myself, and uh, they sent me a new one in the mail and the return label, and I just had to basically I cut the package and use that same envelope as the return, put the label on it they gave me and just dropped it off at UPS, and the new one works fine. But. Um, the thing that you want to buy in addition to those two sensors uh, which of course you get this monitor is these things um, they got a name on them somewhere here yeah it's called tank halo I'll leave the link down below for these uh, these are sometimes slow to ship sometimes they're out of inventory uh, but they're like a, a rubber and this will leave the gap underneath the uh, propane tank that's needed and not only that but it sures it up it makes it more secure um, but this will give you the gap that you need for that signal to get out now you may not have this problem if you have an open propane tank uh, bottom I guess you could say um, because the signal will get out that way now with those little tiny aluminum feet that they gave us I don't have any problem with the signal uh, at all it's just the, the tanks are just so unbalanced so I'm gonna go put these on listen I'm not gonna show you what I'm just going to show you what it looks like out there with those aluminum feet, and then I'm going to show you what these look like on. But <laughs> really, seriously, you well, just set them on there. Well, if you have the aluminum feet on and you go to get your tank refilled, the first thing that happens is when the person's filling the tank, they grab the tank and drag it across wherever it's at and knock up one of the feet off. And even if they didn't <laughs> knock the feet off, you might lose it in the process. And even if you don't lose it in the process, I have never been gentle with my propane tanks as far as picking them up and setting them down and when they pick them up and set them down on the concrete once they're full or when they pick them up and set them on the scale if they're refilling that way um, every time you do that they're just these little aluminum things that could split break whatever um, or get expanded to where they just fall off yeah, cause um, they're barely on there and they know and and I know the company knows that uh, just for the fact that uh, they give you extras whenever you buy your kit because they figured you're going to lose them. So, uh, yeah, get these. We'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Now, that's going to straighten out the RV for today. Um, how are we going to straighten Heidi out for the day? <laughs> uh, we've got that electric bike, and we're going to make a half ass the temp at putting it together. Um, I don't think I'm going to need much for tools. 
they include some tools, but mm, we'll see. I don't know. Hopefully there won't be a video of the wheel falling off while I'm riding Oh, my it. God, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I just got a great idea. Maybe I might have forgotten to tighten a nut. Better yet, the handlebars coming off in their hands. That'd be a good one. No, I want to do that. So uh, that's what we're doing. And let's pick it up outside and look at the way I'm dressed. It's chilly. It, it's supposed to be 74 today. 74 after a whole string of high temperatures in the lower 60s to upper 50s. And at night, it's getting down to the 40s. Last night, it only got down to the 50s. However, the wind out here, we're getting 30 mile per hour gusts. So, and there's no sun for right now. There's no sun. There's a no. bunch of cloud cover. So I don't know if we're going to get up to that temperature. I think it's going to be a, a bust. Unless the sun breaks out here in the next hour, um, I think the temperature might be a bust today. But sweatshirt time. Right, so here's the tanks and the way they mount. You can kind of see over here especially. Look how wobbly. See those little aluminum feet? The tank just kind of wobbles around. It's not supported very well. And that's because it needs an extra space for this sensor that's right here. So. What we're going to do is remove these feet that are wanting to fall off, and you can see they're pretty crappy. And now uh, you can see the ring. And look how beautiful it goes on. It is so delightful. So you can see the spacing that it's providing, and it's more secure all the way around uh, than, again, those aluminum feet. And that signal will pass through there, so we're good to go. All right, so Tank Halo, get it. And be done with it. Well, it's a quiet morning so far. Uh, we had a couple of pieces of machinery that were running off in the distance, way off in the distance, but you could hear it. Ooh, the wind did blow. It twisted my antenna just slightly, ever so slightly, but just a little bit. The other thing is these bugs are everywhere. Looks like a giant mosquito. I'm not sure it's not. See, there's one right there. Nope, that's another one of those big mosquito-looking things. Yeah, I, I don't know what the deal is with these bugs. They're last minute trying to get into places or something. The other thing we had was uh, those potato bugs, stink bugs, whatever you want to call them. Man, they've been getting in the RV too. Let's see what Heidi thinks. So should we turn the RV around, or the truck around, and work out of it? Yeah. You want to back the truck in? Yeah, I can. Okay. It's cool. as close as we can Well, we, we have, I have needle nose in the truck, but that'll work. All right, let the fun begin. Oh, my. Look at all this. They say recycle your packaging. Yeah, eventually. Oh, that's kind of soft. So, again, there's plenty of uh, videos on how to assemble this stuff. I'm going to pretend like I read the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi will keep me in line, won't you? Mm -hmm. All right, let me get to work. I can't believe she's riding it. I haven't seen her ride a bike since we were in Tennessee. But it looks comfortable. I told her, I said, can you pedal it okay? I don't think she cares about pedaling it. <laughs> oh, man. I think she's just wanting to twist the throttle. I know that's what I'm going to do. Oh, that, is, that bike is definitely hers, though. It's definitely for short people. I felt like I was eating my knees whenever I was pedaling it. Yeah, she's actually... Uh, Got it going. Got it looks comfortable. I'm sure the seat's a little harsh, but... Oh, the gravel reminds me too much of the scooter. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you think? It's nice. Were you comfortable? Yeah, all except the gravel. Well, that's expected. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now, you should put the power up to five. How do you do that? The mode button on the left, just hit up, uh, up, 
See the numbers? Yeah. There you go. That's speed. Oh, my gosh. So, go ahead. Don't put it on YouTube if I wreck. Oh, I'm putting it on YouTube. That's the whole reason for all this. The thing is, is it's not like that it, you just push the button and it goes to the fastest speed it possibly can. She won't twist it any faster than she can. Oh, my. Holy cow. That thing is booking. I'm surprised she went that fast. Just to give you some history, guys. We had mopeds. Hers did 40 miles an hour, and mine did just over 50 miles an hour, about 53 or 54 miles an hour. She didn't like riding that so much. <laughs> she definitely wouldn't ride mine. So we got scooters. So it's did 60 miles an hour and uh, she wrecked her scooter and broke her shoulder so she's always leery of bikes I don't see myself doing that <laughs> <laughs> not on gravel yeah not on gravel <laughs> it freaks me out a little <laughs> okay Yeah, I'm not a fan of the gravel. Too many scooter memories. So we got the bike together. There it is. You've seen us riding it around in all of its glory. Uh, what do you think about it? It's pretty cool. Okay. I, I'm not. You know, like it's got a... like a 20 mile range. Can you imagine driving it 10 miles? That'd be like you driving it from home to work. Yeah, that's uh, almost eight, or almost, yeah, yeah, almost eight miles. To your old work. Yeah. To our old home. I don't care for it, my, personally, to ride it myself, probably because it's so one. short. Yeah, this one. Uh, and it has to do with the front fork angle. I like more of a rake. I like there'd be more of a rake there, but I'm sure we could play around with that for Heidi and make it a little bit more comfortable for her even, because it has adjustable front shocks. So... We, now we got to go dig out our bike locks <laughs> so this thing don't walk away. But it's nice. It, it's got good power, um, even with my big butt on there. You remember that one lady that was on laughing or whatever? Oh. Lily Tomlin. Remember yeah. she used to sit in the big high chair or something? Yeah. That's what you look like. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so to the right of the snack bar here, you can see is these double doors and this empties into the laundry mat and i don't know there's a lot of campsites here for nice. three washers these are very nice washers and then the uh mission. Ooh, automatic lights Oh, so these would be the shower house. Okay, so this is the showers too. Okay, nice, nice. Nice all the way. So what do you think? That's pretty clean and I could have washed laundry for a lot less money. Than what you did uptown. Yeah. Yeah. It was 275 for a wash. Yeah. Up 50 here and it's open 24 hours. Oh, it is. You're right. Holy it's cow. It's a three minute cycle, which is cool. And the dryers a dollar for a 45 minute cycle holy cow oh well so is life that, that's sad so Heidi and I played the uh, infamous game of golf and I'm so good at it there was 18 holes and it's a, it's entertaining yeah. it's not overly hard it's not easy it's not one of those easy and it looks like it's pretty decent these are gems that you can find, you can see in the buckets here. So what you do is you go in and you buy a bucket of dirt. It's like $10. And then you uh, just come out here and do your uh, sifting, your panning, whatever you want to call it. Over at Brighton there for you guys. 
Oh yeah. So they had all the water features turned off. You can tell seeing the sea. Come on, guys, look at all these leaves. Holy cow, there was hardly any leaves when we got here. Yeah. Yeah, they're turning and falling fast. What are we doing? Or can I get out of here? That's yeah, sure. that's yeah, that's true. I, there's no way we're going to be here for the first snow. No. <laughs> we're already been here for the first frost, unfortunately, but not the first snow. We're kind of running around here getting our stuff together to go back home tomorrow and a couple things man I'll tell you what like I said those little stink bug potato bugs whatever they are we've got so many of them that have met their demise up in here <laughs> because they're on that screen I turn on the fan and they just get sucked right up into the blades they fight it they fight it but it don't work so well so what was our big revelation today that we're a little cramped for space. Yeah. Because somebody ordered some bicycles. I had no idea how big those bicycles were. If you guys remember, um, and I'll put a photo in here. Hey, you watch out. Check out this photo. Something. This is our 95 F-150. And what you're seeing in the far front of the picture there, if it's coming across pretty good, is the two mopeds that we used to have. Uh, I had a Vespa C um, and or a, a Piaggio C and Heidi had a Vespa Chow um, or it could be a Piaggio Chow I guess too I think that one's a Vespa though uh, both of those weighed about a hundred pounds and both of them fit in the front of the truck uh, from left to right or right to left and we didn't have to put the handlebars down. All we ever had to do was put down the mirrors. The, the mirrors that were on the handlebars, uh, we just had to flip them down. And that was it. We could roll them inside there. Now, if you guys remember, my old cap was taller uh, in the back. But in the front, it was pretty much cab height. Um, these bikes are tall. Heidi's bike. And, and that's not even the big one. I mean, mine's the bigger bike. Mine weighs a little bit more. Uh, hers weighs about 65 pounds. My weighs about 70 pounds. And um, they're just big. They're tall. So whenever it was time to put her bike in the back of the truck with nothing in the back of the truck other than that water tank, a spare tire for the trailer, and the box that the uh, bike came in, just in case we have an issue, uh, it, uh, it didn't fit without us taking off the front tire. Now, I don't have a problem taking off the front tire. It's just a matter of what's going on whenever we are out and on the road. Where are we going to put these bikes that if we stop somewhere for, you know, a few nights, that we can get them out of the back of the truck easily? I think that I'm finding the answer to that is um, we're going to have access to limited stuff in the back of the truck. And whenever we need to get something out, we're going to have to just take a bunch of other stuff out to get to it. Which Heidi will be pleased because I'll be doing it all and cussing at her the whole time. Because I'll be upset about it. No matter what it is I'm trying to get out of the back of the truck, I can't stand crawling around on my knees up in there digging it out. Now I know that you guys are probably going to recommend, you don't even have to start typing, you can stop. Uh, you know, one of those bed slides or something. Uh-uh. That won't solve the problem. Yeah. And the thing is, is of course, the bikes, a bike rack would be an answer. But would it? I mean, now I've got, you know, uh, took me all that time to get that $1,000 generator secured. It'd be a lot harder to secure two, you know, $1,500 bicycles that could be stolen. I mean, I'd have to lock them in and, and, and to keep them protected from the weather. I mean, you could get it, you know these situations, you get it somewhere, and it might rain for four days, five days, seven days straight, where we're not going to get those bikes out. Even when it doesn't rain, uh, you know, you, the ground's all wet, everything's still soaked. Um, so in the meantime, those bikes are on the back of the uh, trailer. Let's say I use that cargo rack in the back, which we did the math. If we took, 
everything that's back there now and added those two bikes and the gas tank was full and the extended tank and all that stuff we were at how many pounds 367 so 370 pounds and that bumper that we added on there can handle 600 pounds one foot out from the bumper so I would assume that it can handle 370 pounds over the entire bumper you know uh, it's just now you're talking aesthetics and again safety being secured back there so Heidi said that she's gonna now buy a toy hauler <laughs> something that he's been against for the last 10 years yeah I've been against toy haulers because the floor plan just uh, it doesn't it's all do anything about the toy hauler Side by side. Give me a side by side. <laughs> so, anyways, um, what we'll do is, uh, yeah, we'll we'll. Uh, I I still want the bikes in the back of the truck. Uh, we'll just streamline the we'll just streamline the back of the truck. We'll, like I said, we we're planning on doing that anyways. I think that we could probably uh, figure it out. Um, what what I'll do is probably put it in the passenger side of the truck. Because Heidi will fit in the back of the truck in the cap area a lot easier than those bikes will. <laughs> it's a bumpy ride back there. We can always put a bike in the back. Of the car, of the truck. Yeah, we could. Yeah, we could. We could put both those bikes in the in the back of the truck. The If you guys don't know, on the Super Duty starting, well, for sure in 2017, I don't know if they started before that, when the seats are up in the back, the floor is flat behind us. It's completely flat. Of course, we would lose, you know, that area. Well, not really. I mean, that's a thought. We could put them back there. We could take the front tires off, and we could put them back there. I'm sure we'd have room back there. As soon as we took the front tire off, though, her bike was completely easily put back in the bed of the truck it just had to be laid over because we don't have a way to secure it necessarily and if I could find a good place for them to sit all the time if a permanent place I will do what I need to to mount uh, some sort of a, uh, uh, a rack or something inside the truck that will hold the front forks so we're talking about bicycles and thanks Jeff hate it he says, if I remember correctly, Heidi and mopeds don't go good together. Yeah. <laughs> it's not exactly, it was, I never had a problem with the moped. It was the Honda Elite. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, and not a bicycle. Like I mentioned. Not uh, that I've never flopped a bicycle, flopped a bicycle at 18. So, yes, there's that chance. <laughs> yeah. And I told that story whenever you're riding the bike. But basically, Heidi, um, I led a dry a little ride that we went on for the first time ever she usually always leads the ride when we had the mopeds she led the ride when we had the faster mopeds she led the ride whenever we had the scooters everywhere we went she led the ride but it just so happened that night she wasn't a hundred percent sure where we were going so I was leading the ride and I have a tendency to drive a little fast go figure and um, Heidi was staying up with me, but unfortunately, I think she was driving maybe out of her comfort zone. We went around a corner. Even though I'm an accomplished rider on motorcycles and mopeds and scooters and bicycles and all that stuff, I, I hardly have ever wrecked. Uh, I wrecked a motorcycle one time, I think. Not a street bike, but a dirt bike, and I was jumping something. And I wrecked a, a bicycle jumping something again. But other than that, um, I ride pretty well, and we went around a corner, and even though I had a better, quicker, responding, handling scooter, uh, this gravel had washed out on the road, and my bike kind of got a little squirrely, and I felt it. And as I navigated the rest of the corner, I was looking back in my mirror the whole time, knowing that Heidi was going to hit that corner, and she was riding something that was a little bit more... A driving machine not a riding machine and it was more for comfort and it was kind of a, a lean to make your turn type of deal and uh, anyway she was just sliding across the, the gravel across the road and into a kind of a half a ditch and she had broke her shoulder so we got rid of those so as far as her getting on these bikes yeah it's a uh, it's a little hairy for her to, to even get back on a bicycle because literally right after that um, I fixed up her scooter that 
was damaged in a couple places. I fixed all the stuff, and I sold it, and then I sold my scooter right after that. There's no sense of me having one and her not having one. So, that's the long story about why she's feeling a little bit anxious on the bike for the time being. Especially in gravel. In gravel. It, the gravel <laughs> is pretty rough here, I'll have to say that. So, what we'll do is, um, well, again, it's going back to the same thing. We really wanted to streamline the back of the truck. We really wanted to take the stuff in the garage and, and really narrow it down. We'll see if that'll happen. You guys get to see if that happens. But in the meantime, we're going to relax here, probably eat some snacks that aren't good for us, watch some TV, and uh, we'll pick this up tomorrow. Oh, yeah. By the way, I know everyone down there typing. Everybody's typing this. I don't want a folding bike. I don't want a folding bike. I wanted something that's comfortable. Look how big I am. Yeah, could you see him on a folding bike? Train bear. <laughs> Train bear on a unicycle. I don't want a folding bike. I want a nice, big, comfortable bike. So, yes, they're going to be bigger. Yes, it's going to be harder for me to store. But And I know they make these little things that they're coming out with, these little, you know, short, fat tire things, too. I, I just... I'd rather it not look so much like an electric bike. I mean, there's only so much you can do uh, for the price point that we're operating under. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to get one that's got all the batteries hidden in the frame and stuff. But I, I don't want something that's, you know, kind of funky looking. And I understand. I mean, I get it. There's a lot of people that's got them out there. And if they're happy riding them, fine. I mean, that's it's great. I mean, you got... You can fold them. For the most part, you got you know extra room that you can put it. You know, I get it all the way around. But if we were if we were smaller, yeah, yeah. Mate, if we went on a diet, lost some weight. Yeah, if we were the size we were we whenever consider. we went to Florida, yeah. I would I would right. I would trade these in and get something small. You know, they yeah. fold up. But no, no, not uh, not happening, guys. So. I jumped back on camera just for that reason, because I thought, you know what, everybody's going to type, well, won't you get a folded bike? <laughs> no, we thought about it, but no way. Not, not yet. Good morning, YouTube. Heidi's been a busy beaver. Uh, <laughs> that's funny, busy beaver. And the uh, cleanup has already began. Uh, it's time for us to leave. So, uh, getting us ready to go I honestly how much effort did you put in it I mean is it more than normal no. yeah uh, uh, we're coming at this point from the the position of being yeah that needs shut off uh, being full-time you know and, and all of our stuff's in here so and we've been living in this for a long time now considering that we've lived in a home prior to that so being at the campground a little bit different um, you could see you know our counter space was always cluttered up Heidi made sure that whenever she puts this stuff in here that there's nothing rubbing anything else let me flip you guys around did I say fit or flip so try to hold this camera so it don't make noise so plastic this all plastic except for obviously the fire extinguisher that always stays by the door here just in case and the uh, cup yep there's a club here you guys didn't see wrong that's a club this is gonna be for the chair we'll get that out there but the uh, there, there's nothing metal glass banging into each other here I mean this stuff may rattle around but it's not gonna hurt anything I have a couple cups of uh, glasses up there and they stacked them on top of each other. Yeah. And if they break, then we weren't meant to have them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> That's how I'm looking at it. Right, that. right. Uh, she's trying to do this to where it's the easiest. I'm just for us. trying to set stuff up to where it's if easy. We're in a hurry to move. Right. Not, I didn't do it sloppily or anything like that. And I'm not wanting to, stuff to break. But if it does, like our, her, uh, our Corel dishes. Plates, right. Um, I didn't do anything with them, but they are kind of divided between the dinner plates and the saucers and the bowls. Let me tell you one thing as we're sitting here and all this noise is going on outdoors. Let me just get this off my chest because you know I'm going to have a complaint of some kind. Yesterday we were sitting by the fire. As we were sitting by the fire, this gentleman came by uh, that's riding the mower here. 
and uh, a friendly, friendly enough chap. Seemed nice. I, I talked with them, but I, I'm just kind of curious, you know, how much customer service is built into people, and I don't know his schedule. I don't know his routine. I don't know what he's got ahead of him. But he did come by yesterday, and he politely told us, Hey, listen, I'm going to be mowing tomorrow if you guys want to move your stuff basically off the lot, off of our area, uh, so that he can mow, which we promptly said we'll be leaving tomorrow. Now, checkout is 1130. It's 920. So it's 920. Do you think he could have started his mowing on the other end of the, the campground or whatever? This Maybe he has to do this loop? There's only four of us in this yeah, section. Yeah, there's only four people in this entire section. Does he have to mow here right now? I mean, we're going to be leaving in le at the latest less than two hours from this time right now. And I'm saying the latest because he knows checkout's 1130. I, I don't get it. It's kind of funny, um, but oh well. So as far as getting back to what we were talking about and putting everything away. I would think that getting the inside of the RV ready for transport takes 30 minutes total. 30 minutes, the whole thing. There's a couple of things we got to be concerned about that we, you know, now have to worry about because of the extra stuff we have. All my computer stuff, using the Ottoman tote, which Heidi will put a link in the description if she can find it. Um, the uh, the thing is incredible. Herbie, you've seen this because when you came over and visited, you sat on this. This thing can handle a really decent amount of weight. Not saying anything, Herbie. I'm talking about when I sit on it. It's a heavy, heavy load, and this thing does fine. So we've used this. I mean, Heidi's used this to actually kneel on to get up into the cabinets and that whenever I have my feet stretched out trying to keep the swelling down. <laughs> whenever it's hot out, it seems like my ankles like to swell up. So uh, it's a great, great piece to have in here and you can see, and it folds up to nothing. It really folds up to a little box, but it, we don't need to fold it up. You can see what the deal is, is all my computer stuff goes in here protected by the blankets, the throw blankets that stay in here when we are camping that way when Heidi gets a little bit chilly she can pull a blanket out and cover her legs up or feet up and then she takes a nap <laughs> which is very true which is very true right uh, so what we got to do now is go outside I've got to look at the slides make sure everything looks good out there and uh, just try to make sure that everything that could fall down shake fall apart uh, does not and you know that's sometimes a, a pretty good task However, the good news is, like I said, about 30 minutes for us to get all of our stuff ready to go. Um, Heidi and I is a pretty good team. We know what needs to be done. Uh, we don't know whenever we get to places it's like 28 days, but if we keep stuff rented up... Yeah, we've been here a week. Which, um, but but still, we... There's some stuff that I decided I was going to put away and or get rid of, and... Uh, I think the big thing is is just keeping you know everything tidy every day. Yeah, you guys seen our I videos. Mean, I, I know that my counters always looks cluttered, but I don't I don't have counter space like other RVs do. Yeah, this is sure. yeah this is the most limited counter. I still think we had more counter space in our old RV, especially after the re. Other than this. Yeah. But yeah, after our remodel, um, it gave us more counter space. I mean, we're using the oven top all the time for counter, which is fine. It, really, you know, I, I think that a lot of people miss the point. This isn't a house. This isn't a full-blown house that you can just put your little knickknacks and, and keepsakes and stuff like that all over the place and expect them to be there forever. This is a moving thing. This is a moving trailer, basically. And, uh, you know, that stuff needs to be relocated. It has to be, you, you can't, you can't set up shop and have everything perfect right in its place and expect it to stay there all the time. And we were kind of that way ourselves, believe it or not. Heidi and I used to be that way to where 
we had stuff that we would put, oh, hey, this is where the Roku goes, this is where the DVD player goes, this is where, you know, uh, other stuff that we had inside, the, the remote controls will go into this remote control caddy that sits on the end table. Um, it, it doesn't work that way. And I think a lot of you guys know that. It's just putting it into practice is sometimes kind of hard, like for us. I mean, it's kind of hard wrapping our head around, okay, I've got to take all my computer, and, and I'm telling you, when I was working from the house, that laptop wouldn't move until we went RVing. I mean, it's not like I would move it at any point in time. And the same with the way I plugged in my my USBs, uh, the uh, the strip, and the same with my my recharge strip. Um, I have a, a five volt power source for USB. I mean, all that stuff sat in a certain place all the time. My monitor always sat in the same place all the time. Now I'm moving it constantly. I think that's going to be the hardest part for me is the one that we drive for 150 miles and then we set up for the night, maybe two nights, and I've got to get the computer out because I have to download video onto the computer. Maybe I need to edit some video even. And then the next morning, I got to, you know, we got to leave again. So it's just a matter of getting it out just for that short time. If I think I might have to do that, though, I mean, it is a laptop. I can do work with the laptop just by itself under battery power, even though that thing's a, a hunger hog as far as power goes. It will run off the battery for a little bit, and uh, I can get some work done. So the one thing I try to explain to everybody is trailer wag and how this, this hitch really works. So let me show you here. If I do this, you know how once you stop doing this, you know how you screw around and do this stuff. It just stops. There, there is no more try to settle back into space. Wherever I put this trailer at with the truck is where it stays at. So if I'm going through a turn here, but if I do something a little crazy and do something like this, it just stops. It just stops immediately. Now you feel a little bit in the truck, but hardly anything at all. So again, I'm going around the corner now to the right, so you should be able to see a little bit more of the trailer. There are a lot of cars coming, so I'm trying to do this without freaking them out. Um, so here, I'll do a wag. See, just screwing around with a wag. And then as soon as I stop, it, it just right there, it settles in immediately. And I can do that at pretty much any speed. I can do that at, you know, 60 miles an hour. So if you have to do a, an emergency lane change and go from one lane to the other and back immediately, um, the trailer's right there. There is no yaw, really. There's no uh, point where the trailer is still trying to go left um, and then you want to go back right. Uh, th that motion is pretty much canceled immediately. Um, the, the trailer just doesn't like to exert force into the uh, truck so we'll do it up here a little bit further um, since i'm in a bigger spot let's go ahead and show you now here's wag 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 and as soon as i stop that's it the trailer's right behind me again wherever i stop with the truck there's no of it you know continuing to move the truck side to side to side for like the next 20 feet trying to figure out you know what where it needs to go so that's the biggest advantage I can find by far with this hitch, other than it's easy to hook up, and it's uh, it's really easy to hook up, and uh, it's got a sharp, you know, 87 degrees I can turn. So just to let you know, that's, uh, that's one of the advantages. Of course, the disadvantage is it's pretty heavy. That old hitch thing's pretty heavy, but other than that, it's a good, good choice. All right, so we're back, and the dog's barking. We got engine brakes going down the road, and we hear trains and lots of traffic. Uh, I didn't miss this place. So uh, I just backed it in, like I said, kind of just however. It is perfectly level, though. Side to side, Heidi had to get her little car out immediately. And you can see, this is what I always talk about, the soft grass. It's so soft. I've got big divots now right where I ran my, my truck. I mean, it's literally right just so soft and the thing was I had the truck out in the road um, waiting to get in because Heidi had to jump out and move the for sale sign it was out you know right where <laughs> right where we normally drive through so that kind of sucked to some extent but we're here we're home 
Uh, unfortunately, we're here, we're home, and the house is still not bought. <laughs> I, I don't know what they're doing, but it looks like that they're doing some sort of, uh, well, that pipe don't look big enough to be sewer. Oh, they're moving the power poles back. They're making, looks like they're making the intersection bigger at some point. That's what I think is happening. Let's go up here a little bit further and see what we can see, guys. No, because the power pole, there's not a power pole there. Unless they're going to put it directly across instead of having it angled. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, it's hard telling. But that thing that's sticking up out of the ground there has studs on it. it has four bolt studs. I know you can't see that, but that looks just like where a light pole would bolt to. Maybe they're going to move this, this cable and stuff to where it's directly across and not at an angle because that is a, a pretty long stretch for all those lights to be on not my concern so we got home one of the things we find uh, just recently is um, we've never had the problem before that when we run our water that it smells so we have to run the water to clear all the lines out there's a sulfur smell that must build up in the uh, CPVC when we're gone Heidi's just sitting here biding her time what do we do come home and immediately order some food because we're both starving I want to go through McDonald's drive through but Heidi said I can't do that with the RV uh, so um, back of the truck that's what I want to show you I'm kind of going 20 different ways here the uh, back of the truck you can see how fast it would fill up now I'm contemplating getting rid of the Lear locker which was a huge option that I love and I wanted uh, so that I have extra height for the handlebars of the bikes um, however with the front tires off the bike uh, they clear easily there is a lot of stuff up there but all that stuff could easily be put into one tote I'm sure so I've got to think about that uh, the other thing is is I could probably use the structure or at least the holes that are drilled up there uh, to hold this thing um, I could probably use those holes uh, to support you know some of the long things that I have and still utilize that roof space to some extent but uh, that sounds like too much of a project so yeah I'm gonna have to think about this layer locker and if I might be able to sell it um, taking it down out of there and then I've got to worry about the holes that are up top. There's something too as far as the inside of the RV. Uh, the pass-through storage, it's huge. We've got a lot of stuff in there, but we could probably put a divider in there, make it a little bit easier for those chairs to stand up. And again, so glad to hear the dog barking. Boy, I missed that. But everything else is normal. So just to give you guys a first look let's do that just a real first look basically um, this is the stuff that needs to go in the back of the truck so what do we have that's really bulky this big job box which there that big husky box that's bulky but can easily be managed this toolbox stack right here these three toolboxes little bulky but still could be managed let's talk about some really bulky stuff how about the blue boy now i could put this on the back of the rv but i'll be honest with you and no offense to anybody that does it i think it looks tacky i don't know why it just i don't like the way it looks back there maybe i have to get over myself and and put it there anyway so that's what heidi's telling me um that black bag that black awning bag right there that's bulky that needs to go uh the blue the gray one's going somewhere else 
that black bag not very bulky but nonetheless it's kind of long uh, that's our picnic table canopy we use that a lot the other one we can just throw somewhere inside the RV uh, that's just a sunshade and um, this this box is not full like that bag there with all the tools that goes in there um, of course the oil change kit and then some totes here and uh, that's pretty much it I have a, a toolbox that's in the back of the truck right now that's pretty much it there's there's not a lot more that goes in the back of the truck oh I'm sorry I take that back this here this definitely goes in the back of the truck um, the tire that I never sold that might have to go in the back of the truck somewhere the spare tire carrier the old spare tire carrier for the RV maybe I could utilize that with the uh, the bumper system that I currently have it would be a matter of me just modifying that which I could do. That's not difficult, not hard at all. And then these two uh, heavy hitch it bars. I'll keep those just in case we get into uh, a situation where we run into somebody that has a travel trailer. I'll find a place for those in the truck. But that's pretty much it. Oh, my ladder, <laughs> as I talk about it. The uh, ladder, that's got to go in there too. Here he comes on his first ride because I wouldn't take it down the road. And some jackasses passing him. Couldn't wait. So it's a new day in an old place. <laughs> and we're back at home. Uh, as you saw, um, we didn't do much yesterday. Uh, Heidi's bike, we screwed around with that a little bit, put a front rack on because we finally went and got the front racks from the local Dollar General. Uh, we did get our absentee ballots in the mail, uh, so they're all filled out. They're ready to go, so that's good. Um, that's one less thing holding us here. Really, the only thing holding us here right now, We, uh, of course, we got to put some stuff. We got to get some stuff to Heidi's mom. And we got to get some stuff. Uh, of course, we got to load up the back of the truck, see how it all looks. But the main thing is, I got to wait for my bike. My bike's holding me up right now. Um, so that was probably poor judgment on my part. <laughs> Hopefully, they don't decide to ship in November because that won't work. Uh, well, it will. We'll just have to find another place where it'd be shipped to. So, um, as far as uh, what's going on today, well, you see the desk in the background is all bare I gotta get all the I gotta get the computer out I gotta sub uh, you know start uploading some of these videos for you or this video um, or at least editing it and uh, if, I don't know it seems, uh, every time we get in the driveway it feels very comfortable I'll, I'll can't call this camp COVID because we used to <laughs> hang out here during the whole hey you can't go anywhere Ohio you need to stay in your house um, so Camp COVID here, the best part about it is, um, you know, we have free laundry. You know, this campground has free laundry. Uh, this campground has uh, a huge free uh, common house, whatever you want to call it, common room, um, uh, community room, uh, which is basically our house. Um, we, uh, we have free water here, which, you know, it's a... The bad part is, is it does have sewer, but you have to pump out yourself. <laughs> um, you can't just, it's not a direct connection. Now we're uh, a little too far. Yeah, we're a little too far, I think. Actually, wow, maybe not. It's going to be, it'll be close. But anyways, we do have free sewage. Um, and the other good thing is uh, we do have uh, hookup, electric hookup, but it's only 110. Yeah. It's 15 amp service here. Now, the bad part about this, uh, well, uh, the, uh, let me go back to the good points. The good points is um, they take care of the lawn here. It's, uh, you know, mowed by a service that comes by, so it's always taken care of. Uh, we have free rain in the place. Um, we're familiar with it. We have a big storage shed that we can use and store our stuff and so it's not in the back of the truck uh, so yeah the place all that stuff that's nice now here's the the big negative 
This is an expensive campground. This campground costs nine hundred a month to stay here. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's uh, not free electric. <laughs> um, whatever you're paying nine hundred a month for it. So um, it does have great Wi-Fi though. Exceptional Wi-Fi. Just kidding. Of course, we're just talking about the house here and what it costs for us to stay here each month. So we've been talking about that as far as the rate that we currently have and, um, uh, or I should say the asking price that we currently have and what we may want to do to lower that if we think it might get the house sold sooner. Um, I, th I still think we have a couple more months until it doesn't make sense. All right. Um, so... We'll, we'll let it go for the time being. Um, I think whenever winter, again, I, I mentioned this before, and this is just me analyzing a market that I don't really know anything about as far as home selling. I can just put myself in a buyer's shoes, though, in a buyer's frame of mind. And I'm telling you that during the winter months, people start looking at homes differently. Um, just like in the winter months, people look at cars differently it's just one of those things that the winter you know really brings out those people because they're they're trying to make their car something that they can survive in and I think that's what the, the our house is good at our house is not luxury by no means it's not special it's not fantastic it's not it's not glamorous it's not uh, a shiny paint job it's you know it does what it's supposed to do. Keeps you dry, keeps you cool in the summer, keeps you warm in the winter, and it's safe. Um, and for storms, it's got a full basement. I mean, it's it's a it's it does what it's supposed to. It's a good house. So I think that once people's attitudes change a little bit, they might start looking towards it. And again, I don't know anything about the house industry. What I just told you about might be a crock. I don't know. <laughs> so I got to get to work. Heidi's gonna. I'm gonna unload my car. And load my car up, unload it, and then we'll get some pictures and. Uh, yeah, for sale sign. I forgot car. about that. Heidi's car. We got to put it up for sale. So everybody's gonna ask because I hate I hate when we do. Oh, how much are you selling that thing for? Uh, I think we're gonna start about thirty eight hundred bucks. Yeah, um, local cars just like hers uh, sell for up to five grand. Um, it has one little tiny small rust spot in the back fender, surface rust, and it has a scuff on the front left fender. Uh, the interior has some stains in it. That's the interior, like the seats, has some stains in it. It's clean, it's just it's got some stains. Um, other than that, uh, the tires probably could get replaced at some point. They, they're good, they're good tread. They're just kind of noisy tires. Heidi, Heidi cheaped out. She bought some cheap tires. They, they've been doing her fine. It's just as soon, the very first day she got them, I'm like, God, these tires are noisy. Um, but it's a good car. It's got 98,000 miles on it. Uh, it is very quiet. She just changed the oil. It gets good gas mileage. It's seat seven. That little car seat seven is awesome. Um, the seats all fold flat. In the back, you could have a big, huge storage area. good Jared. for Uber or uh, yeah, Lyft. Instacart, yeah. Lyft. Yeah, Instacart, right. Yeah, I was doing Instacart for a little while. Um, it was perfect. You fold all the seats down, it's, and you have all that area. I'm telling you, for Uber or Lyft, though, no. it's comfortable. Yeah. I mean, I sit in the back. When we used to go out and our son would go with us, I always, I would sit in the back. I had no problem. I love sitting in the back. It is a very comfortable car. It's got a lot of room for the passenger, yeah. especially the front four. Now, if you're in the back seats all the way... The people in the middle have to scoot their seats up. They're adjustable. And it still has plenty of room. I sat all the way in the back. Yep. Just one time, just try it out. Um, I wasn't uncomfortable. But anyways, that's what she's got to do. So let's get at it. So a lot of times, um, whenever I'm trying to shoot video for you guys, uh, just about everyday stuff. Um, but, you know, it's going to come in handy because... We are in an RV, <laughs> we're living in the RV, and there's stuff that we do that fixes problems, and it may apply to you. Uh, so, I was sitting here talking about how I was going to do this deal, and um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this tray here is what my laptop sits on, and it's supposed to go like this, 
uh, supposed to sit upright. However, um, I had it turned upside down and I had all my hard drives that were sitting in this tray so whenever we moved to our next location um, I could just pick up this whole tray and set it into the ottoman uh, that's sitting on the bench over there. Well, uh, that was working except sometimes I was pulling cables loose and I was still moving hard drives. And then of course my laptop was sitting on this upside down which is great for airflow um, but uh, not so good as far as being stable up there. So I had the intentions of securing my hard drives to that tray uh, a little bit better and I'm going to put a link down below for this what a surprise um, if you guys don't know about it this stuff's a godsend literally if you're traveling in your RV this museum putty this stuff will hold pictures on the wall to some extent let me rephrase that they will keep pictures that are supported with like a nail or a screw like in a traditional sense they'll keep them from rocking as you go down the road uh, they won't support the weight the nail or the screw or whatever would have to support the weight. And I'm talking about the old traditional, you put a screw in the wall and you just hang your picture on there. Um, but it also, if you can't tell by the picture, um, it keeps stuff from falling over. And I was kind of uh, skeptical about this originally when we first got it uh, because I, I didn't know how well it would work. So my experience was I had this jar this bucket I don't even see. yeah it's in here which it did come with us maybe I can get it out of this box now and keep it out so I had this little jar bucket thing that I've had for God how these hairs everywhere <laughs> uh, this, this it's just a little mason jar and they make these bucket bosses for five gallon buckets and this is where you put all your tools in that well they made little ones for that I've had this for years I mean years and years and we use it a lot we you know pins uh, screwdriver I know where this stuff is my knives to open packages um, we usually keep a set of nail clippers in here so I've had this for a really long time and it's been relegated to this box which is fine um, not a big deal the box is, is doing fine right where it is however oh, Herbie's pen didn't make it back there you go Herbie isn't that kind of cool <laughs> I think that's really cool so um, anyways it used to sit on my file cabinet by my chair in the house and the kids would come by I mean like I said years so my kids when they were little they'd come get the nail clippers and they'd knock it off and all this crap would fall out and I have to put it all back in so finally I put a snake all the way around of this museum putty and fixed it you just kind of give it a twist little twist when you're pushing down on it and um, it never got knocked off the file cabinet again and when I went to remove it 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 pulled right off so the stuff works really well so I thought what I'll do is take that museum putty and so the the hard drives don't get hot I'll, I'll make little balls eggs you know this is like playing with play-doh it's kind of fun and uh, I'll secure it to that that tray that way the they won't pull the cables it won't fall off. and then it just dawned on me as I was telling the camera about this why don't I just put them on the I can just stick them right to the table I mean there's no reason I, the table is where I work there's no reason these can't go on the table once they're secured on the table they're not going anywhere and I can stack them you know too high they'll be fine I could probably stack them actually four high um, but I I don't know if I'll do that and that way I can keep my uh, docking station a little bit more secure also although this gets kinda hot I think I could do the same with that docking station we'll have to see if that putty works but I'll clean the table real well it's a little texture kind of thing going on here um, but I'm, I'm sure it'll do fine alright so I think I'm set up and it's a little bit better than what it was uh, you gotta realize there's a lot of crap going on here so the uh, hard drives are all secure they are uh, stacked and basically mounted here with that museum putty and as far as my little pin thing uh, I moved it back here and mounted it here and you can see I mean it's really really secure I'm, I'm not you know crying on or nothing but uh, I, I moved it back there because honestly it's always been by my chair all these years so again just a, a tidbit is it helpful I don't know 
All right, guys, so I'm editing video for everyone to see, and we've got more things that are compiling. Um, the idea was that I was going to take the uh, stuff in the garage and load it in the back of the truck. We might still do that, but we only have one day to do that. And the reason being is we have to, I should say we have to, it's a good thing. It's a really good thing um, with everything that's going on. Our rear window for the RV came in, even though this window has not leaked since I resealed it. Um, and the uh, kitchen window also, that came in. So they called us and they told us that it would be done same day. You know, we basically, it's the same day as we get there, they'll get it done. Um, but the uh, fact is we got to go up there and get it done. Uh, so we have um, made the decision instead of sitting in the driveway here, which again, we're, we're limited when we're in the driveway. You know, if it's hot, we can't run the air. Well, we can, but it's hard to live, you know, it's that whole power management thing I talked about before. You know, got to turn off the little heater so we can run the microwave. Got to turn off the little heater for Heidi to run her um, coffee pot. Um, can't run the air conditioner and then turn on the microwave. I mean, you can see where it's kind of compiled. And, and yeah, it actually got warm in here today. It's 80 right now inside the RV. We have the windows open. Um, but the breeze that's coming through is just fine. It's not a humid 80 by no means. Um, it's very comfortable. Uh, Heidi's washing laundry. Uh, she's actually washing her mom's laundry too, I think. But we were trying, you know, we had, it's funny how you make plans and then they change really fast. And that's one of the things, I'm jumping on the camera here and just telling you, just be fluid. Um, Greg and Juanita, uh, apologies. Um, if you guys don't know Greg and Juanita Griffith, they live in Oberlin, Ohio. They were uh, at a few of our uh, get-togethers, right? Mm -hmm. um, we ran into them up in Wisconsin. Uh, we've seen them up at the RV show a, a few times. And it's good to hang out with them. They're just really good people to hang out with. They invited us to come out to their house and hang out at their home, but we can't make it work. I'm hoping that we can meet up with them whenever it makes sense on our end. So we have to make a decision tomorrow because um, it'll be the last day here at the house for a while, uh, for, for about a week. Should we load everything in the back of the truck, then drive up, uh, then go to the RV dealer, and then come back to the house, or just go to another, go to another campsite somewhere? Um, we can do that um, or which we need to do that we need to come back and, and stay local so uh, what we were planning on doing was this Monday coming up uh, they have a Halloween thing going on locally at the local campground so they had no spots available so we we're gonna wait till Monday and we we're gonna go out to that campground and check in um, good thing we don't they didn't make reservations or anything because that campground, you know, would have had some sort of a cancellation policy. I would have had to pay probably $50 to cancel because it's definitely within 14 days. So now we're just changing our direction. And instead, we're going to go to the campground that's closer to the RV dealer. That way, uh, we can get a good night's sleep, get up early in the morning, and then drive to the dealer. And uh, we can get our RV fixed. And then from that point, we're free. And most likely what we'll do is come back out to this campground uh, where we're at locally um, or where we were going to go to and uh, we'll check in there and um, that way uh, we don't have to worry about putting the RV back in the driveway leveling it out and everything and again being short on all this stuff now if I do that that means that we'll have to come back here to the house and uh, load up the back of the truck that way I think that's what we'll do what do you think Hyde? Heidi, how do you agree with anything I say? Um, Heidi, I think that you should pull the RV with your uh, Kia. No. Oh, she didn't agree. Come on, she the Kia. Would... Agree with oh, okay. So she don't always agree with me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's where we're at, um, and that just popped up. So. I still think we should go to Greg and Juanita's. I'd like to go to Greg and Juanita's too. I just the thing is, is it's an hour and so many minutes further out than what we were going to do. Oh, did you see that? 
the, the awning, I don't know if you guys caught that in the camera, the awning, the wind caught it and just blew it all the way up and dropped it again. I, bet, I guess we better uh, fold that baby up, huh? But yeah, that I, I would like to go to Greg and Juanita's too, but the thing is, it's just, it's a lot of driving, a lot of moving around, a lot of hooking and unhooking of the trailer. Um, I mean, we could leave it hooked up at Greg and Juanita's. I'm sure we could leave it hooked up at the RV dealer. Uh, I don't know. It just, I don't know. All I know for sure is that we have tomorrow, Saturday, and we're leaving here on Sunday. And uh, we're going to the uh, Thousand Trails of Tennessee. And we're actually going to spend some time there. That'll be kind of nice. We're going to be there for about four days. I think that'll be fun, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Heidi agrees with me. See? Told you. All right. Let me get back to editing video. You guys will never see this.